hear me okay? Yes. Is that okay? Okay. Um, so I'm not going to show anything in Visual Studio. I was doing something else. Um, in fact, I only have a deck and uh, lots of screenshots So um, because I'm going to show you being mobile. Um, so uh, my name is Chris Pendleton. I've uh, been around Microsoft for a while. I used to be the evangelist for Bing Maps. And then I moved into the Bing Mobile team to focus on our Bing Mobile platform initiatives. And um, as a result, after about six months, uh, uh, the position for the Bing Maps developer APIs opened up. So I took that. It uh, kind of made sense. So I signed up for this, uh, assuming that I would talk about the Bing Mobile clients and what we do in Bing Mobile. And as a result, uh, as of Tuesday, I'm now the program manager for uh, the Bing Mobile or the Bing Maps APIs. So um, kind of a nice transition. But uh, this will be uh, one of my only presentations on Bing Mobile. So kind of a historic <laughs> moment. We like that. Very yeah. Um, so uh, oh, I, I did want to mention: uh, Is this public? Are we talking about this? Can we talk about what we talk about? Like, can I show NDA stuff or no? Yes. Uh, so, by the way, I'm going to um, give you a form that you're going to sign. Very simple. Just saying that we're showing you some pre-release things that you're okay and you're not if you're following whatever the rules. Okay, yeah. but um, I'm not going to show you anything that isn't public. <laughs> so, um, please, if you have feedback for me, I'm on Twitter. So, at Chris Pendleton, feel free to tweet away, and uh, that's how you best communicate with me as well. Um, so what is Bing Mobile? Um, so we're one of the uh, you know, few people in uh, the company that gets to own an iPhone. Uh, so you know, the, the guys at Windows Phone kind of hate us, but I get to carry around an iPhone. I also have an Android, and I have a Windows Phone. So I, I do show some love for Microsoft as well. Um, so we run the mobile clients for iPhone, Android, and then we also uh, write the site for m.bing.com, which is the mobile web. And we also do the RIM clients as well. So if any of you have a BlackBerry and you were on Verizon and you woke up one morning and that was Bing, that was us. You're welcome. Um, so what we are not is the Windows Phone experience for Bing and the iPad app that was released uh, yesterday. So if you have um, either of those, you can complain to those teams about Bing. Um, organizationally, I always like to put something like this because not a lot of people have insight into how the company operates. Uh, so uh, I figured it would be nice to see where we fit. Um, under Steve Ballmer, there's obviously a number of organizations. Uh, we're in an organization called the Online Services Division. And Online Services is made up of four groups. Uh, we have Bing, which is the core search engine uh, and the web experience. And then we have Ad Center, which is all of uh, basically our modernization. MSN, I think everybody's familiar with that, and then Bing Mobile. And Bing Mobile's run by Eric Jorgensen, he's our corporate VP. And then under that, there's basically five groups. Um, and this is all under R&D, and this is all, these are all the PMs, uh, all the program managers that run uh, the, the respective groups. So at this level, these are the GPMs for the five groups. Um, we do own local search, so that was a recent change. Uh, we moved local search out of core into Bing Mobile. I uh, figured that was uh, a, a better fit because when you're mobile, you typically want to know what's around you and whatnot, so local search makes sense. Um, commerce is effectively the back end <coughs> behind local search, so uh, a lot of how businesses can edit their information on local search and all the listings that come up. Uh, businesses have an interface into that, and that's run by the commerce team. Uh, there's a team called Signals. It's basically interacting with uh, parts of the device, so like GPS, accelerometer, camera, things like that. So the Signals team does some of the whiz-bang, really cool stuff, uh, and I'll show you some of that today. <clears throat> then there's the Bing Maps team, um, and that's the team I'm on now. And then uh, the Bing Mobile Shell team, which is effectively the shells for all of the uh, information that comes from the Bing Core search engine and the different APIs that uh, we actually host in Bing Mobile. Um, and to Ed's point of why he doesn't come to the top on Bing Mobile, but he does on the web, uh, we actually have our own server system that uh, filters results differently uh, for mobile-specific devices. So we'll take Ed out of the equation because, no, just kidding. Uh, we, we, but we do have a server system that is mobile-specific. Uh, so the results that you would see on mobile aren't always the same that what you would see on the PC. And there's a number of different heuristic factors that go into that and why we do that. Um, but that would be why you're different on mobile and, or lower on mobile and higher on the web. 
But in Google, I'm number one. In Bing, regular, I'm number one. On mobile, I'm number three. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> OK, so um, let's talk about Bing Mobile. So um, what I did was basically step through uh, the different clients. I, I won't go into all of them, because uh, they're effectively the same features across uh, the different devices, um, as well as a mobile site. But this is all available today. If you have an iPhone, um, you can download the app. It's free. And you'll see effectively what I'm going to show you today. But I'll talk about the different features. And if you have questions about any of them, you know, we'll, we have questions at the end. Uh, feel free to stop me in the middle, though. I think it's better to be a little more interactive that way. Um, so these are f effectively uh, the different uh, facets of Bing Mobile. Um, it's kind of our home page. We do have you know, our, our beautiful background images that everybody loves. Um, this is from yesterday, so uh, I didn't get today's giant fish. Um, but So this is what I'll talk about, and I'll dive into each of these. Um, Kind of a nice way to do the agenda, in fact. So, uh, so core search, you know, this is what you would expect from Bing. So we take, uh, you know, search results from the core search engine and bring it down to mobile. Uh, there are some facets, as I mentioned, that uh, we do sort them differently on mobile. Um, some of them make sense, some of them don't. Um, we're fixing that every day, uh, but a lot of that happens on the mobile team where we have this mobile application server that sorts uh, results differently uh, for mobile. But at the heart of it, we are a search engine, um, but we're expanding out what we do, what we consider part of the Bing mobile experience and what's important to users. And um, There's actually kind of a, an eclectic collection of applications that we're now just throwing into this Bing mobile application. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see how it's all going to come together, because right now there's some random things um, that don't necessarily make sense. But one thing we are focused on is experience. Um, and with the daily image being such a big deal, uh, under the image search, we do a lot of really uh, fantastic presentation. And if you just click on the images tab uh, or the images link, you'll get this nice presentation here on the left. And it basically suggests some trends that are happening um, or some photos that uh, we have popped up to the top that we think are um, nice for people to look at. So you'll see these uh, on the left. And then uh, as I do a search, uh, you'll see things on the right. Um, that's the actual search results. Okay? And as I click on one of these, it does support full rotation. So if you change the device uh, direction, it'll rotate the image and um, whatnot. So I just, of course, I pulled down a map of all the images I could have pulled down, um, as well as additional uh, information about the image. So there's a lot of metadata that people upload with images um, and some images that we can just read or some information that we could just read, and we'll just pull that out. And you could go full screen, so you don't, you know, you can look at a thumbnail. You can um, look at uh, a smaller or a smaller version of the image, and then go full screen and see the full thing. Um, so, but all the images that you would see on Bing come down to the mobile, and we do have privacy settings. We do have uh, adult settings. So, um, if you have kids that use your iPhone, uh, you can basically turn on the parental controls, things like that. Or you can leave them off and see some really interesting images. Um, also on mobile, we have shopping. So you can actually shop with uh, Bing Mobile. So you can see what products are available and whatnot. Um, the search with your camera, I'm going to save for the end, because that's kind of like the really juicy stuff. Um, but uh, the, the camera function is, is very interesting. But for the shopping, there, there are certain parts of Bing that are less robust on mobile at this point. So uh, right now, we're just allowing people to browse through and do, and you, you can do some commerce through the shopping interface as well. Uh, but it's fairly, you know, we don't have any way of other than, you know, you put in your own credit card and things like that. So capturing credit card information and whatnot is not a part of Bing Mobile today. Travel. So we have uh, Bing Travel is a very popular part of Bing. Um, it's, it's, I think it's actually the second most used function on Bing is checking out deals and flight deals and whatnot. Um, and uh, that came through an acquisition. Uh, we use a lot of IDT, uh, ID, IDT data or IDA data, whatever Google's trying to buy right now, uh, so that we can't have it. Uh, but we use a lot of that data in our um, engine that determines best flights, right? So uh, the concept behind our travel portal is that um, should you buy this ticket now or should you wait? 
and Bing, Mo or Bing Travel uh, shows you, um, or predict, it's basically a prediction engine to say, you know, typically, historically, and based on the number of tickets that are left, you should either buy now or wait a little bit longer, and that will, uh, that'll, then you should wait to buy the ticket or not. These green arrows indicate that the prices are rising, so you probably want to buy now. Uh, we do have Showtime feeds as a part of the Bing mobile application as well. And we also have this planning mechanism. Um, so if I wanted to see this movie, I could add it to my plan. And what I can do as a part of the planning function is I can add it to my plan. This can connect to my Facebook, and I can invite my other friends to it. Okay, So we do have some deep social connections with some of the social uh, networks that are available out there. So we can say, add this to my plan. It'll connect to my Facebook. It'll post it up. I can tag people that I want to be a, a part of this plan and basically invite my friends to the movie if they want to see it with me or whatnot, what time and whatnot, what location. All this information is a part of the planning function. Uh, and interestingly enough, the planning function is hosted on Azure. So uh, it connects out to Azure, pulls down a web page, an HTML5 web page into the client, and that's where you do a lot of your social invites and whatnot. So, Weather, you know, some of these are, uh, this is ex kind of expected, but if you click weather, it'll use a GPS, find where you are, and then give you the nearest uh, weather station. Looks like a beautiful weekend. Uh, that's, I thought it was supposed to be nice this weekend. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Okay. So this was, uh, this was actually the feature that I moved over for, excuse me, um, I ran this mobile platform, we called them uh, Binglets. And uh, Binglets were effectively uh, third-party services that we were pulling into Bing. We were, uh, so if you take an open table, for example, um, we took all the open table records, we conflated that with all the local search records, so we know which restaurants open table supports for reserving a table. Okay? Um, and we did that with two companies, uh, open table and Grubhub. I actually did it with four, but only two of them actually got released. And the, so this is a local search result. So obviously local is a big part of Bing Mobile. And you'll see the reserve a table here for C-Star, not for John Howie, and you will see it for Ruth Chris. Um, so what, what happens is if you click reserve a table, it loads this page, and that page is actually hosted by Bing. We hit the open table APIs, um, and we load this page. So we have a, a platform behind all of this in which we're pulling APIs from third parties. And uh, basically, we designed it to look like OpenTable uh, for the first iteration. So while you may think that we're bumping out to the OpenTable mobile site, we're not. Uh, we're staying on the Bing site. And it's on a platform that we hosted or, and servers that we host. And we're just hitting their API. Uh, once you click Find Table, tell you which times are available for the respective restaurant for the number of people that you need. And you can book right there, right on Bing. So we've, we're starting to connect with third-party partners uh, for certain functions that you know, we're not going to get into the business of reserving tables. Uh, that's where you're going to see a lot of this start to do. So we're doing some interfaces with Facebook, and we're doing some interfacing with Foursquare. We're doing some interfacing with OpenTable and Grubhub and, and different partners that make sense for the end user. Um, we launched something called Deals. And, if, and this is actually only on m.bing.com. This isn't on the iPhone con, uh, app yet. Um, but if you go to m.bing.com and click deals, you'll see this experience. Um, we have the daily deals, so basically you know, these Groupon-type deals uh, that come through your email every day, and we'll find you know, which one is the daily one for Seattle. And it's not Groupon, by the way, just to be clear. Um, so we'll pull these up, and you can click through and get the deal. Uh, we'll do nearby deals, so we'll do you know, a radius search uh, around where you are. Or you can do by category. And we have a whole host of uh, different deals uh, depending on the category you're interested in. So you can uh, just dive into those, see all the deals that are nearby. And you can save deals. So you can save it to, your, you know, to the Bing app. And it'll be there next time you come around. So if you just want to save it for another time and then go and use it before it expires, then uh, you, you just go to the Save tab and you can pull those up. We added check-ins in December. And check-in is basically, uh, it allows you to publish to three places at once. Uh, so if you go to the Bing app, to find the location where you are, 
Um, you can post it. It'll check you into Facebook. It'll check you into Foursquare, and you can update your Messenger status on Live ID or uh, um, Live Messenger. Uh, so it's a pretty interesting thing, and you can you know share some messages and whatnot. Uh, so what you'll do is you know go in and configure your application, uh, configure your Bing application, connect it to Facebook, connect it to Foursquare, connect it to Messenger, and then you know just simply select where you are, where you want to check in, let your friends know, and I'll update all those social networks across the board uh, for you. Um, and then you could also make it private, of course, if you just want to check in, but not necessarily tell everybody where you're at, which is funny to me. But I get it. I get it. Uh, maps is a big part, big, big part of uh, mobile. Uh, so obviously we have our maps. And these are the settings. Uh, I pulled up the settings menu because there's a lot of information that you can do um, on the maps. Um, you wanted to just do search. Um, if you wanted to do specific types of directions, right? So we have directions for walking, we have directions for transit, we have directions uh, for driving. Uh, depending on your mode of transportation, uh, you can select the directions type that you want. I have traffic turned on, you can turn it off. Um, you can do a show what's nearby, which is an automa automatic thing as you navigate the map. It'll just pop up points on the map. Um, you can hide the labels, which is effectively uh, in aerial mode, we'll turn off the map labels, so you can just see the aerial photo. Um, the map styles, there's uh, a couple different map styles, uh, like the aerial, aerial with uh, labels and, and the road. We had bird's eye on here for a little while and took it off because we found some pretty big issues with it. But uh, the map styles that are rendered for mobile uh, did include bird's eye, which we'll have to re-release that in, in an upcoming release. Um, and then clearing the map and adding bookmarks uh, are just kind of common features within um, something that a lot of people don't know about is um, block view. Um, so if you see this little blue guy here and you click on him, um, this will switch you to block view, which in, in the web world of maps we call street side and uh, Google calls street view. Um, but this effectively puts you down into uh, on ground level. And so you'll notice we're using some of the 3D function built into the device. Uh, we'll tell you what street you're on. And uh, this little curve, this little U-turn thing, flips it around to the other side of the street. So it's a little bit different in how we, uh, uh, than what Google does, and even what we do on uh, the web for street side. So street side is, is effectively, and, and, and street view as well, it's effectively you're, you're immersed into a bubble. Okay? So <laughs> when you're thinking of you know, street side on the web, you're, you're dropped into this image bubble, and we paint the bubble around you with imagery. And you want to go down the street, you go to the next bubble. Okay? And that's effectively how it works. Block view is a little bit different where we basically unroll kind of like a scroll. So as you scroll down the street, you're continually looking at a flat image. You're not in a bubble anymore. You're in a corridor. So you're walking down the side of the street and looking at the side of the corridor. And it shows you the sides of the building. So if I were to move this or if I were to pan to the right, it wouldn't necessarily rotate me like it does on the web it would move me down the block because I want to see what other building, what other businesses are down the block. Um, we do have the 3D injection here with the street names. And we also list off the businesses that are in view. Um, so it'll tell you automatically what businesses are right here in front of you. So if you want to look at a building and say, what in, what, what's in the building, um, we'll tell you automatically. Um, so if you're in landscape mode, looks like this. Uh, if you're in portrait mode, it'll provide a map as well. And you can navigate um, all of that to you know, kind of change the look and feel. Um, obviously, this is a lot more exciting on the device. So I, if, if you have um, any of these devices, I'd advise you to check it out, because it's really, it's really pretty amazing. Uh, the business, uh, I don't, okay. that's not clickable actually. Uh, if you switch back to map mode, you can see what the location is of the business. So if someone wants to call them, and if they click on that particular uh, Starbucks, will they get the phone number and the address? Uh, like that's a good question. Times? Actually, I don't know the answer. I can tell you right now. Um, or if they go to the bank, it just shows you like bank timings or whatever they want. Yeah, yeah I mean, you could get additional information about the business, but I don't know if you can get it from this interface. 
from the actual uh, because I see like if you go into the Bing Maps itself, you just, if you go into the Street View, mm -hmm. it doesn't show up the business name which you're looking at. It doesn't right. show. That's right. Yeah, so you're absolutely right. Whereas on Google, it does that, where you can show. Okay, this is the business by the on the aerial view. It shows the names. On aerial view, we do it too. We do the business. Thing. Oh, you mean on the on, oh, on the yeah, on the it doesn't. Map. Yeah. Yeah. So what Google did was they rendered all their tiles with business names yeah. on the actual locations. And it does. Um, yeah, I thought that was kind of useful too. Uh -huh. I, I like that. So that's something that we are heavily investigating. I'll right. tell you that. Uh, I'm curious about this business thing now, so I'm look it up real quick. Um, we also acquired a company called Tell Me. Moving on to voice. Uh, we acquired a company called Tell Me, and we incorporated that. So the little microphone that you see and some of these, there is, uh, and these screenshots here, that'll activate Tell Me. And what it does is it'll interpret what you say, it'll convert it to text, and then it'll do the searches. And then based on the searches, um, it will, you know, the, the mobile application server will provide back uh, the most relevant results. So if I did a search for um, Alaska, right, it's going to give me a map of Alaska first. Uh, uh, it's going to look at maybe Alaska Airlines next. So it sorts the results in different categories um, on how the mobile application server operates. Of course. Um, so uh, the Tell Me stuff is all incorporated into uh, the Bing Mobile Client as well. So it's really nice, actually, when you're driving and whatnot. You shouldn't be texting. You shouldn't do be, be doing. You shouldn't be doing searches and whatnot. But we all do. Uh, this is a little bit safer, and uh, talking to your mic. And I think the LCA guys would appreciate it if I just said you shouldn't do that. But there's that, and there's reality. Um, okay. So one of the really cool factors of um, Bing Mobile is the camera function. Uh, it's got some really neat things uh, attached to it. So if you turn on the camera function and just hover over different objects, uh, there's three things that can happen. Um, one is the UPC code. So if you just hover over UPC code, it'll identify it, it'll look it up, it'll do a search, and then boom, it will result on uh, what, we actually, what I actually search for based on UPC. And UPC is pretty straightforward because it's got an actual number, right? There's an actual number associated with it. Um, so we can look up that UPC code and we can find the exact UPC code because there's this giant database of UPCs, right? But um, it will also interpret text. So it'll try to interpret a text uh, document that you're, you're searching for. Uh, it'll find the biggest text, convert it you know, uh, out of pixels and into text and do a search on that. Um, but the, I think the most interesting one is it will do cover art, which is really cool. So this is the cover of this book that I was holding and I just hovered the camera over, took a picture, and it searched for this, and it actually found it. I was kind of surprised that it worked, because um, it was it's an extremely advanced search, because it's got, there's so many pieces. This could be a piece of art. This could be a lot of different things, uh, but you know, based on maybe the text and whatnot, it interpreted that information and did a search and found the actual book that I was looking for. Um, just by hovering over it. So there's a lot of cool factors built into uh, that camera system, and we're going to continue to innovate on how we search uh, and using that camera function, because uh, there's a lot of things that we can do with it uh, and extract information out uh, about it. So so that's it. Uh, there's there's quite a bit of information in Bing Mobile. There's quite a Quite a few features, a lot of really cool stuff that allows uh, users to search and enables people to search for things. Um, but if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yeah. Uh, just on that last slide, how, how do you know that the cover art isn't uh, how, that it's not just accessing the text? Like how? I guess I'm not sure this is a good example in terms of showing the cover art because the text is there. Yeah. It, it'll also work for logos and such. So it'll look for, like I did a Starbucks cup, and it found the, the siren logo, and it looked that up. So the text, this one, you're right. It's probably not a good example. 
um, because it does have text and it could cheat. Uh, but that when it, it, what happened is it, it's hard to actually capture a screen capture when it's doing it because it's active camera and whatnot. Uh, but what happens is it activates that little book icon, and that way you know that's what it's using. So it's, uh, okay. it, one so of the searches is for book covers. So you don't actually choose whether you want a UPC or text or cover art. It just does that. Yeah, it does it automatically. It'll fire all three, in fact. OK. Yeah. Other yeah. questions? So you just uh, hey. doing context-based searches, right? Vijay, I let you hold it and be responsible for it. <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, man. <laughs> so when you show by the camera anything that's going on in the street view, it's a context-based searching it is doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you're saying the businesses that you're getting is based on the existing database that you already have. Yes. But if it's not available, what will it do? Will it uh, just say blank or it doesn't show up anything? Or will it try to get it from the Google, from a Bing search or something like that from my external databases? You mean for the street view? Not the street view, but uh, if someone shows a camera on something and they want to see, what is that actually? They want to search on the specific. Uh, Oh. Image or like how you're seeing over here. Right. By looking at the cover, you're saying, okay, this is a book, this is available on Amazon or something like that. Right. But now you want to show something else on a mountain or something like that. Oh, there's a mountain, they have all these places you can visit around that. So does it have such thing like that or is it no. something? In, okay. No, the, uh, it, it'll just tell you there's no results found. So, and no, we don't search Google, by the way. So, I heard Google, that. But it, I it heard is that. a bang. <laughs> <laughs> no. There, there's a whole reason. There's a whole, like, I could tell you all about that Google nightmare, by the way, that they said we were cheating and all that stuff. That's, okay. That was a pure distraction from what we were really going to talk about that day. And that was how spammers have taken over their search engine results. And mm -hmm. it's defrauding their customers on ads. Okay. We were going to talk about that. Uh -huh. But instead they said, Bing's cheating. <laughs> like, well, really? Then you are too. Questions? So lunch is ready. So grab Chris, and then you may feel comfortable, more comfortable. Talking.